Hello, this is a quick video about making a chess piece. It's a follow on from our last video about smooth and flat shading, and this is just meant to advance and practice those skills. So if you want to follow along with the course, then click on the links below. Also visit gabbit.co.uk for lots of tutorials from beginner th right from beginners right through to advanced. So we're going to make a chess piece. There are quick ways of making this, but we're actually going to use a slightly slower method just to practice the skills that we learnt in the last episode. If you want a quick method, then look up the screw modifier. But for now, we're just going to use a traditional method of extruding and loop cutting. So first of all, let's get an image in. So press N on your keyboard to get this panel up. Hopefully you remember this by now because we've done it in previous episodes, if you're following through the course. But we click on background images, add image, then find your image with open. You can also press on this button here, which will give you the actual images. And there's an image I've found just by typing into Google, chess piece porn side. Just be careful how you spell porn. Okay, it doesn't show up yet because I'm not in orthographic view. Press five on your numpad for that. And I need to be in either side view, front view or top. So I'm going to go to front view with one on my numpad. Okay, and there's a nice pawn to trace around. It's a little bit wonky, so I'm just gonna rotate it slightly. If I scroll down a bit, you've got some rotation things here and I can just line it up a bit better. Okay, so I'm going to delete the cube and I'm going to click in the middle with my mouse and shift A, mesh, cylinder. So shift A is add. I'm gonna bring this down and do the bottom section. So scale in the Z axis, S then Z to pull it down, then S, then shift Z. So I don't scale in the Z axis this time. I scale in the X and Y to pull it out. And of course this has some perspective in it, this chess piece. So I'm just following the outline more than anything. So I'm gonna press my middle mouse button to come out of that view so I can go into edit mode down here to edit mode or press tab and then control tab, I can choose my faces or I can click down here to face mode. Now I can select this one face, go back into front view with one on my numpad and now I've got that face selected and I can start extruding it. So if I press E, then right click. So I've got an extrusion and I've got it selected. Now if I pull it up slightly and then scale it in, I'm starting to build my chest piece. And again, trying to follow roughly the side profile. So I'll extrude that again, pull it up to where there's another obvious point, scale it out. And obviously I could do lots and lots of these extrusions, but I'm just gonna follow the main areas where it goes in and out and obvious areas, because I can do these other bits a bit later on. Whenever you're modeling, do the basic outline first, then the detail later. So I'm gonna extrude this with E, pull it up, S to scale and bring it in. So E to extrude then pull it up with my mouse, left click to apply and just keep following that process. E to extrude, scale, left click to apply. E to extrude, scale, left click to apply. Now when you get to the end, you'll notice that we've got what's called an end gone at the top here. I'm just going to press full stop on my numpad to zoom in on it. End gons are okay to outline shapes in hard surface modeling, but it's better to have a point in this case. So I'm going to delete that face by pressing delete, then face, then go to edge mode, which you can select down here or control tab and select edges. Alt click to select an edge loop. So that's alt and right click, extrude it with the E key, right click to enable the extrusion and then scale all those in right to the center. And it's actually better to just press S0 on your keyboard, then they'll all be in exactly the same place. So we've still got lots of points in the center here, and they're all selected at the moment, so we can just click over here to remove doubles. That will make them all one object. You see up here it says removed 31 vertices, so they're now all one vertice. So if I go Control Tab to Vertex Mode, or click down here to Vertex Mode, I can click that one point in the middle and pull it up. So there we have a very basic chess piece. Now you might want to go in and edit aspects of this. So let's say here I want a curve. I can press Control R with my mouse over this area and then select with my left mouse button. Then I can move up and down. And then when I'm happy with the position, click the left mouse button again and I can scale that out. And maybe one just above. So Control R, left click to start with so I can move it, and then when I'm happy, left click again. And then I'll scale that out a bit. Now we've got a bit of a curve. So this is a great place now where we can set this to smooth shading 
and then set this area here to flat shading. So let's remind ourselves how we do that. We go over to the object data panel and click auto smooth. So if I go back into object mode now, the auto smooth hasn't done anything because we haven't clicked on smooth shading yet. So we click smooth shading and it looks a bit of a mess. So let's put this angle up to 180 degrees. That makes it all smooth. And now in order to smooth things out, back into edit mode with tab or click on edit mode down here. I want to make this edge hard. So alt click on that edge, alt right click, control E for the edge menu, or you can go to mesh edges to get the same menu and then mark sharp. And now if I go back into object mode so you can all see that with tab, you can see it's marked it sharp. So let's go back into edit mode with tab and select the areas we want to be sharp. Control E, mark sharp. Alt right click, Control E, mark sharp. And I'm just tabbing in and out of object mode to see what these things look like and these changes look like. So there we have a very low poly chess piece. And you may be saying to yourself, well, this doesn't look that realistic because they're so sharp in certain places that it looks very fake. Well, in the next episode, we'll be looking at the subdivision surface modifier, which is another way of smoothing out your shapes, but with much more detail. So very quickly, for those of you that want to add some color to this, let's go to cycles render like we have in previous episodes. And I'm just gonna get rid of the timeline by clicking on these three lines here, pulling up, then down with my left mouse button held, and then I'm gonna pull out another menu here. I'll just press N on my keyboard to get rid of this panel, and T and N to get rid of the tools and the N panel over there. Now I'll click on the node editor, so down here, node editor. Click on N to get rid of the panel again, and click new. And here's a quick way I can change the color of my chess piece. We're in solid mode though, so you'll need to go to material to see the color changes. If you want a shiny chess piece, then I would strongly recommend changing the diffuse to the principal shader, and you can click on the diffuse and press Shift S, and then you can change that to the shader, principal shader. If that doesn't work, Shift S, it may be because you're on a Mac, so you may need to delete your shader and then Shift A to add, or come down to the add menu here, shader, principled, and then hook that up. And if you want to see it in rendered mode, click on the render tab just there, and there's our chess piece. And if you want to render that out, make sure your camera is pointing at it. So zero to get the camera, N to get this toolbar back up, and I believe lock camera to view is up here, and we can move it around into position. I'll leave you to add a plane so you can get the shadows and it's on the floor. So there we have it, a simple chess piece. And as said, in the next lesson, we'll be looking at subdivision surface modifiers and we'll be making this chess piece look really realistic. Thanks for watching.